Hello and welcome back. I'm Tom Mahogany here for Inside EVs and today we're going to be doing the 70 mile an hour highway range test with the Jaguar I-PACE. It is the end of February. Uh, right now it's about 38 degrees but overnight it was down in the 20s so the battery was kind of cold soaking all night long. Now we are DC fast charging it up to 100% to try to warm things up a little bit and today it is going to get up into the 40s which is a little bit warmer but this still will be a cold weather range test because obviously if this was 70 or 80 degrees we'd go a little bit further. So after we finish charging her up, I'm going to hop out onto the turnpike and drive in circles as I always do. We'll see how far this cat goes. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All righty, we're out on the turnpike cruising along at 70 miles an hour and one of the things we always check is how accurate the speedometers are and the Jags was pretty accurate but when we were driving at 70 miles an hour my GPS apps was telling me that was only about 69 miles an hour so I bumped up the cruise control to 71 miles an hour so we're actually driving along at 70 miles an hour but the speedometer indicates 71 miles an hour we do that with all the cars and quite frequently they're off by one or two mile an hour so we like to use the same gps app so i know i'm being fair to all the cars uh, as i mentioned earlier we charged her up to 100 percent it's a little bit of a chilly day here in new jersey it has warmed up a little bit now we're now in the 40s uh, overnight it was down in the 20s when i was at the charging station it was at the 30s so it is going to warm up it's going to get close to 50 degrees today but that'll help a little bit, but not a lot because the battery was really cold soaking overnight, uh, well down uh, below 30 degrees. It was around 24, 25 degrees overnight here in New Jersey. So battery's pretty cold and that's gonna have an effect on the range. Another thing that's gonna have effect on the range, uh, we always check, uh, have uh, wind apps and it's a little bit of a windy day today. We have a 11 to 12 mile an hour wind coming in from the west. So I'm driving north and south on the turnpike, um, so it's not a direct headwind or tailwind, uh, but it's going to have an effect. It's probably going to rob the Jag of a few miles, and it's something we need to take into consideration. But again, this is a cold weather range test. We have the cold battery. Now we have some wind. So, you know, we're not going to get anywhere near the EPA range rating. We typically don't. Uh, and I always like to compare it to the EPA highway range rating. It hasn't been published yet for the 2022 JAG, so I don't know exactly what it is. When I learn that, I will update this video and put it in the description. Uh, but it's you know, probably somewhere around 220, 230, somewhere in that area. It's gonna be less than the combined range rating. Uh, and you know that if this was a good weather, if this was a warm weather range test, I'd probably expect to come in somewhere at around 220, 230. But that's not gonna happen today. I'm hoping to hit 200. I think we're gonna end up right around 200, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but um, we'll see. Uh, so in any event, we, we're cruising along now, um, going over the things we do to set up the vehicle for these range tests. We talked about charging the battery up to 100. We talked about wind, the speedometer, uh, the tire pressure. We always set the tire pressure to the manufacturer specification. Now the Jag has, um, this vehicle we have here has the optional 22 inch wheels with these massive 255 40r 22 inch pirelli tires and that's also going to rob a few miles because the vehicle comes standard with 20 inch wheels um, not quite as aggressive as these 22s they look gorgeous on the car but they are going to rob us a couple of miles of rain we set the uh, tire pressure even though they're the same tires front and back the pressure is staggered i think it was 44 on the rears and 37 on the fronts we set it to that when the vehicle is cold uh, and uh, okay, we have wind, we have tire pressure, speedometer, driving mode. We set it in the eco driving mode. We always use the most uh, energy efficient driving mode that the vehicle has. Uh, one that at least will allow for climate control. Uh, some vehicles, the most efficient driving mode completely shuts off the uh, climate controls and we're not gonna have that. Uh, we don't think people would 
accept that when they drive and I certainly am not going to when I'm doing these range tests. I want to be relatively warm or cool. And as always, I set the Jags uh, climate control to 68 degrees and on fan setting one. Now, even though it's cold out, this Jag has a beautiful uh, panoramic uh, glass roof and it is a bright sunny day. So the air is beating down in the cabin and it's actually blowing cool air through the climate control. Uh, not, it doesn't need heat because uh, the, the fact that the sun is baking through this beautiful uh, roof is warmed up the cabin enough where it's, it's warmer than 68 degrees in here without even using climate control. So um, I think that's, that'll help us on that side. But uh, I think I covered everything as far as what we do to set the vehicles up. I'm now just going to continue driving and I'll check in at the 25 at the 75% state of charge point, 50%, 25, and then the wrap up when we're done. We'll see how far this guy goes. All right. We just passed the 75% state of charge point and we have traveled 48 miles. The consumption rating is not great. It's 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, but in the Jag, it's actually displayed in kilowatt hour per 100 mile. And the display shows 45.2 kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. That translates to 2.21 miles per kilowatt hour. Not a great efficient car, the Jag. We weren't expecting it to be. I've driven these vehicles before and I, kind of knew what to expect uh, at highway speeds. Uh, and again, mentioning the factors we said before, the big wheels, the cold weather, the wind, uh, you know, on a better condition, we probably could average 2.4, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, maybe in that area. But today we're probably going to be around 2.2 to 2.3, somewhere in that range. Uh, and that's probably going to deliver us right around 200 miles of range, maybe a little bit less. Again, we have 84.7 kilowatt hour usable energy for this range test today. And I, I plan on using as much of it as possible, getting probably to 84, maybe not to that 0.7, because I'm not going to drive it until I have to push it to the charging station, but I'll get pretty close to that. We'll check back in when we're at 50% state of charge and we'll see how far we've gone. Alrighty. At 50% state of charge, we're halfway through and we have gone 97 miles. So that means we went one mile further than the first 25% of the battery and pretty consistent for the Jag. We have a better consumption rate now. The vehicle is showing our overall consumption rate is 44.2 kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. And that translates to 2.26 miles per kilowatt hour, up slightly from the 2.21 we were averaging from 100% down to 75%. So fairly consistent, a little bit more uh, efficient, one more mile driven. Uh, if this continues, we are going to fall short of 200 miles. You know, we'd finish up somewhere around 194, 195. Uh, I'm starting to think that's going to be where we're ending up and I'm going to have to change my route calculation a little bit. I think I'm going to stop at a charging station before the one I was originally planning on uh, stopping at. And that means I have to uh, make another loop because that one's considerably closer than, than the other one. And uh, I would end up with like 5% uh, state of charge if I just drove to this next one, if things hold with uh, the consumption rate that we're doing. Uh, but that's what I always do in the second half of the range test. I'm constantly calculating how much further I can go, where the charging stations are, and what I'll do is additional loops on the turnpike. I'll get off, drive south for another five, 10 miles, whatever I need, turn around, come back north, and uh, luckily there's enough exits so I can pretty much calculate uh, how far I'm going to need to add, how many more miles I'm going to need to add to the trip in order to end up at the charging station. Basically under 2% state of charge is what I like to or get off the highway at. And then I'll finish the last couple of miles driving slightly less than 70 miles an hour. Uh, there's always secondary roads there that I can drive maybe 50 miles an hour or whatever just to get that last 2% down to 0% and then pull into the charging station and charge her up. We're going to check back in when we're at 25% state of charge. Hopefully we're going to be somewhere around 150 miles driven, uh, but let's see. 
Well, we're 75% through the range test at 25% state of charge, and we have gone 148 miles. Yes, that was the best 25% segment we've had so far. We actually went 51 miles in that segment. Our consumption rating continues to improve. It's now showing that we're using 42.8 kilowatt hour for every 100 miles driven, and that averages out to 2.33 miles per kilowatt hour. The best average consumption we've had in this trip so far. I think the fact that the consumption rating continues to improve has to do with the wind. Because so I've been looking at my wind app more and it does appear as though on the second half of the trip, the vehicle is benefiting from the wind. Whereas early on, it was coming in from the side, but it was kind of from the side and hitting the front of the vehicle. The winds have shifted a little bit. They're blowing around here in New Jersey today. It's a pretty windy day. We're up uh, to anywhere between 10 and 15 miles an hour of wind. And that's significant. That's enough to really make a difference on a range test, but it is what it is. And uh, people drive in real world conditions and that's why we do the range test in real world conditions. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, the, there's a lot of things conspiring to maybe pull down the range today, the temperature, the tires that are fitted on this Jag, it's got the big 22 inch wheels, this wind that we're dealing with. Um, but other than that, everything's been okay. It's warmed up now, we're at 49 degrees. Um, and the sun is really bright and shining. So the, the, the climate control is really doing very little to maintain uh, a nice temperature in here. Uh, we'll check back in when we get to the Electrify America charging station in East Brunswick, New Jersey. I think I have it plotted out perfectly where I should be pulling off of the highway when we're at somewhere around 1% state of charge, maybe even zero, uh, depending on how well we do this last 25%. Um, and that's what we typically aim to do. I can't pull right off the highway and plug right in. The charging station's about a mile off of the highway, uh, so I like to arrive and get off the highway when I'm definitely below 2% state of charge. Hopefully it's at zero at that point. I just drive the last mile or so uh, while the vehicle still reads 0% state of charge because uh, that's going to be at slightly lower speeds than 70 miles an hour once we get off the highway. We'll check in when we get to the Electrify America charging station, see how well the cat did today. All right, well, we made it and we ended up with 195 miles driven. Exactly the same as what the Hyundai Ionic 5 that we recently range tested did in the cold weather. Now, the interesting thing about the I-Pace, I actually pulled off the highway at 193 miles. And as soon as I pulled off the highway, it went into reduced power mode and the center screen shut off and so did the uh, climate control. The crazy thing about that is if you're relying on the center screen for your nav to, to direct you the last couple of miles to a charging station, you're out of luck. Now I knew where I was going, so I didn't need it. But another negative on that was the center screen is where you get your state of charge. So I couldn't see a numeric value for the state of charge. I just had to rely on the miles remaining and I drove an extra three miles, no, about two and a half miles uh, to get to the charging station here and pulled in. I believe we're at 0% state of charge. The, the display says that there's no miles remaining to drive, but it's possible that the car still is at about 1% state of charge, not 100% sure. We'll know when we plug in to the Electrify America charging station because that tells us the initial plug-in state of charge. But in any event, 195 miles is our number because after I got off the highway, when it went to that reduced power mode, it was actually having difficulty maintaining 40, 45 miles an hour. So if you're an I-Pace owner and you've never taken the car down below 5%, understand when it gets to a low state of charge, like 2% state of charge, you, you're not getting full power and it will be very difficult to maintain highway speeds if you're on the highway. So you wanna get off the highway and use secondary speeds. You might be able to hear the wind. As I noted when we were driving, it is a windy day today and it's still around 12 to 13 miles per hour wind gusts. So it definitely had effect on our range here today. But in any event, the 2022 Jaguar I-Pace finishes up with 195 miles in the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. 
We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like what we're doing here at the Inside EVs YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle content. And thanks for watching.